And, it's, and what I want you to do is simply listen as I'm reading the scripture to you to the word or the phrase that pops for you. Maybe it's surprising. Maybe it's something you've never noticed before in the scripture. Maybe it's something that you knew was there, but you heard it in a different way, right? So just listen for that word or phrase. Some of us, as we're listening, an image will pop into our head because that's the kind of person that we are. If, you, if an image comes into your head, notice what it is. Some of us, when we're listening to the scripture, will feel something. If you feel something, notice what you're feeling. And then others of us, because of who we are, it may, we may think of a concept. That's okay, too, because that's the way we think. Just don't start immediately analyzing the concept. Okay? Just receive it as a gift. Okay? I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, uh, the very last chapter. Um, this is the story, if you remember, uh, the disciples, this is post-resurrection. The disciples are still trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, they believed deep in their hearts that everything they had hoped for and prayed for and expected had come to fruition. But, you know, even when we do that, there's still this little tinge of doubt or uncertainty and anxiety because there's all this other stuff swirling around you at the same time. So they're just dealing with that stuff. Um, and they do what fishermen do. They go fishing, right? Um, often when we are anxious, we default to the thing we know best because it provides comfort. And that's what they do. And so they go fishing. And this often happens with fishing. They did not catch a thing, <laughs> which is why they call it fishing and not catching. <laughs> and as they're coming back, they look on the shore, and there's a, a, a person standing on the shore waiting for them to come in. Now, the amazing thing about this story is they do not recognize uh, at first that it's Jesus. You know, the man that they had just spent at least three years with is on the shore waiting for them, and they do not recognize him. And it's in the process of Jesus asking them to fish in a completely different way because they've been fishing the way that they've been taught, which for many, many years was the right way, he actually decided, said, no, I want you to fish on the other side of the boat, which is now the right way. And so I asked them to do ministry in the completely unexpected, non-conventional, non-traditional way that they had been taught, right? And, um, and in doing that, they fulfilled all their expectations, even more so. They called 153 big fish and at that moment they start realizing oh yeah who's the miracle in our life Jesus right and they go through this process of recognition and full recognition comes as they pull up on the shore they start sharing bread and fish can you can have communion with all sorts of elements and they go around that table which is the campfire and they share breakfast together and they realize once again yes we are never alone so it's this, it's this beautiful time of epiphany, and, and once again, it, took, you know, it takes three times, sometimes for some of us, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times, you know, how many times, to really see, yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so it's just this incredible thing. And then, after the breakfast is over, Jesus looks to Simon Peter and has this incredible encounter with him. And that's the scripture I want to read to you. So again, just listen for the word, the phrase, the image, the feeling, and the concept that God's Spirit gives to you in this moment. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And the, Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then tend my sheep. He said to them the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And you know, Peter felt hurt because he had asked him that third time, do you love me? But he said back to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Then feed my sheep. Okay, and as you're ready, 
just uh, take a moment in your group to share that word or phrase or feeling or image or concept and, and just share it. Just shouldn't take A couple of you tell me if you feel uh, comfortable doing it out loud. A couple of you tell me just some of the, the word or phrase or image or concept or feeling you felt. Just whoever would like to. Well, I'm, uh, in Lovelock, I have a lot of people who are uh, ranchers who raise sheep. Uh -huh. So feed my sheep has a whole different connotation <laughs> for me than it might for That's anyone right. else. But it's just a, it's a lot of responsibility to me to feed my <laughs> sheep and then them to go out and feed their sheep. Uh-huh. Yeah. So context, context really matters. Right. Someone else? Yes. Yep. Uh, my word is feed. Feed? Yes. Yeah. It's a powerful word, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Lots of responsibility with it. Yeah. Feed. Someone else? I'll go. Go ahead. I'll go with the sheep that we have. Okay. Having raised sheep, they're incurably stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking to go there, Bob. <laughs> and flighty and just a regular pain in the nose. Yeah, we can take that off. Well, therein lies the tale. You know? If yeah. you can get, up, get past that, they're worthwhile. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, up, we're up here on the periphery of what we're really talking about. And we're talking to somebody that's not talking to our mind, but talking to our heart. We're going to talk to our mind, and he's talking to his heart. Oh, thank you, Pete. Wow. Thank you, Dollar. Because you've anticipated where I'm going with this Bible study. <laughs> um, now, uh, by the way, for me, uh, I noticed um, the way he answered the third time, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. So, in the midst of his frustration, he responded even more strongly, um, Simon Peter. So, I'm going to read the scripture again, okay? I'm going to give you a little more time with this one, and, um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give you a question to think about while you're listening. Uh, by the way, um, uh, I can't prove this, but I'll tell you what I believe. Uh, we just did. Um, the, uh, by asking you to, to listen for a word or phrase or notice an image or a feeling or a concept, what happens there is you find your place in the story. <coughs> okay? Uh, and it allows for the scripture story to become my story. Now, um, I don't know why you heard what you heard or felt why you felt. Uh, that's between you and, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, but it's worth thinking about. Okay, because there's chances are there's something going on in your life that led you to hear or feel what you just heard or felt. It could be because we were coming here today to do you know this kind of conversation. It could be something totally unrelated. So when I when I read this the second time and ask you a question, sometimes it's related to the word or phrase or image that you've that you've just experienced. Sometimes not at all. Okay, but what we have just done is we've left you with a gift to take home and chew on a little bit, because you you had that experience just then for some reason, and you are probably the only one who knows what that reason is. <coughs> well, you and God, right? So I, I invite you to, to really you know, take that seriously today and, and ponder that and reflect on that and meditate on that. Because you just received a gift. That's what, what Pete was talking about. As I'm reading it, I want you to imagine yourself on the beach. And you've just had breakfast with the disciples, your friends, because you're a disciple, right? And the breakfast is done, and Jesus turns to you and looks you in the eyes and says, do you love me? And you answer, Lord, you know I love you. And then he turns and looks at you in your eyes and says, well then feed my sheep. Here's my question. What do you mean when you say, Lord, you know I love you? 
What do you mean? I'm not asking for any kind of theological response here. <clears throat> what do you mean when you say, Jesus, I love you? Okay? And who are the sheep in your life that Jesus is asking you to take care of? Okay? I invite you to listen. When they had finished eating, Jesus turned to Simon Peter and said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus said to him, so feed my lambs. Jesus then asked a second time, looking us straight in the eye, and said, do you love me? And we said, yes, Lord, you know we love you. And so Jesus said to us, take care of my sheep. He asked his third time, do you love me? Do you really love me? I confess I was sad that Jesus had to ask me a third time, do you love me? But I replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. So Jesus looked me in the eye and said, feed my sheep. You yeah, <laughs> should preach on that because when people are stuck yeah. in forgiveness, is they, they keep reliving the past. You know what? It's done. Mm -hmm. And so we're living in the present and into a better future, into a more holy future. And we've talked about some important things. The reason I wanted to bookend it with scripture is what we're really <coughs> talking about, is, is what we heard in that scripture. Um, I forget when I was taught, but someone taught me early in my life that when you're reading scripture, and you're thinking about it and you're allowing it to become a part of who you are, because otherwise it's just an intellectual exercise, is you should always be asking the question, so what? So what difference does this make in my life? <coughs> How does it change the way I think and do things? Right? Because if it's not doing that, it is not the living word of God for you. Right? So this last question, I'm going to read the same scripture. And the question is, what is the nudge? What are you going to do or become <coughs> or be differently this very week? Because you've allowed this scripture to touch you and to change your life just a little bit. You know, there's something about lovingly holding each other accountable that's kind of a wonderful thing. Okay. I'm going to read it um, out of the message and listen for God's nudge in your life. After breakfast... Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? <coughs> Simon said, yes, master, you know that I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Then Jesus looked Simon Peter right in the eyes and asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, master, you know I love you. And then Jesus said, well, shepherd my sheep. Then he said it a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And it was that third time that got to him. Peter was upset that he had to ask it three times, do you love me? So he answered, Master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my sheep. nudge. What's God asking you to do this next week? To share it with someone next to you.